In June 1946, Lautapat learns of the fate of his family. The news comes from Inca, his niece, who's in a displaced persons camp in Austria. She has tracked him down after hearing of a newspaper report that her uncle was involved in the trial. She sends an acquaintance to Nuremberg, who stands outside the Palace of Justice for three weeks, whispering, Hash Lautapa, Hash Lautapa. Eventually, someone recognizes the name, and this leads to a letter in contact between Lauterpacht and his niece. Inka tells her uncle she is the only member of the family to have survived. His parents, his brother, his sister, everyone is gone. Later that year, Inka comes to live with Hirsch and Rachel in Cambridge. Judgment is given over two days on September 30th and October 1st, 1946. Frank is the seventh to learn his fate. Has he done enough to save himself? Hoping for mercy, he too thinks about music, frequently evoking the work of Johann Sebastian Bach, the Matthäus Passion. This we learn from the diary of Captain Gustav Gilbert, the American army psychologist, who has been tending to him. It must be Abarmedich. Abarmedich, my God. Have mercy. Have mercy, my God. Extraordinary. Two men on opposite sides of the courtroom finding solace in the same musical space. Frank is found guilty of crime against humanity and war crimes, but the judgment against him makes no mention of genocide. The tribunal adjourns for lunch. Without mention of the word, it has disappeared. The sentences will be pronounced after the break. To protect the dignity of the defendants, the handing down of the individual sentences is not filmed. Frank listens to Lord Justice Lawrence, who speaks four words. Tode durch den Strang. Death by hanging. Frank says softly. <laughs> 